on their own this weekend. No Cup Series drivers. Ryan Blaney will be here this weekend. Having a little bit of an issue here at the Kentucky Speedway moments ago, DJ. Actually, this is Ryan Sieg first. Getting a little bit yeah. loose. A chase participant yeah, here in the Xfinity Series. Ryan getting, Ryan getting loose a little bit earlier. Back out on the track. Here's Cockham right in front. That, that just looks strange. I know he got day on November 19th battling for the Xfinity Series championship trophy one of those guys battling will be ryan sieg so and, and the philosophy is a little bit different too you know you go over the sprint cup series side they say hey you got to finish top eight in that first round over here they say you know maybe top 10 top 12 and you're okay to get to round round number two yeah and we're all going to learn just as the teams and drivers are going to learn exactly what it's going to take but this is a learning process for them too yeah you can make the comparisons uh, as far as the sprint cup series and what has happened there but this is going to be totally different somebody's going to make it through probably into that round of eight that we weren't expecting just because they didn't shoot themselves in the foot anywhere. The, the biggest thing here is any gamble that you may take, especially in this first round, the, the opportunity to gain a lot of points or to put yourself in a position to win has to, has to far outweigh any loss that you may have. You don't want to put yourself in a position of losing uh, a number of points just to try to make a gain of a couple of spots. So uh, those will be things that the drivers and crew chiefs will have to work out. Chaser Ryan C heads to the garage area. Alex? Well, yeah, and DJ just used the phrase, you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot. Well, Ryan Sieg and his team, in order not to do that, they've just went ahead and taken all the bullets out of their gun. They're being very conservative right now. 16th on the leaderboard here in final practice. No, that's not setting the world on fire, but they also know they need to just have a solid first race. This is a very small race team as Ryan's pulling back into his garage stall right now in his Chevrolet Camaro. Six people are all that's working on this race car for Ryan Sieg albeit two of them have a wealth of experience, one of them being Kevin Cowboy Starland. He was a crew chief for Rick Crawford for years in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series, won races there. And Mike Ford is down here too, won a lot of races at the Sprint Cup level as crew chief for Denny Hamlin at Joe Gibbs Racing. So even though it's a small team, Parker, this is a race team that's getting a lot done with very little. Well, Alex, take that away from him, but it, it closes things back up. Now we've got 12 drivers that have that opportunity that before we didn't have that. Here's another, Ryan C. He's got sponsorship on this car. A lot of that is because of this chase format and the opportunity that he's had to get on TV and talk, and we talked about him battling to get inside that top 12. So it's great to see, and again, it's bringing more dollars to these race teams, and in particular, race teams like this that are family organizations that really appreciate that and, and need these dollars which when they get the dollars it only makes them better and more competitive and, and you know that from from building your own race team at one point even a little bit of money goes a long way for an organization like this yeah and they do everything there you talk about i mean ryan Sieg, he's not only the driver he works on these cars and that's needed and you have to do that and that's the way that i learned about my race cars was put in that situation where that's what i had to do work on them build them fix them when i crashed them and, and so that makes you a better driver better competitor but the more dollars that they can bring into this race team is only going to help them be more competitive, and it's great to see. Alex has more on Ryan C. Well, yeah, and to take that a step further, talking about this small race team, this is a team that's got a deal worked out with Richard Childress Racing. They get the used parts to put on this race car. The chassis are older RCR Xfinity Series chassis. They're only one year old, but still, technology changes quickly in this garage area. But every single dollar that comes in through the sponsorship helps this race team out to get newer parts, to be able to get more speed, and as we all know, Racing costs money. Speed costs money. The question is, is how fast do you want to go? Ryan C. currently 16th fastest. One kind of gives everybody the idea of, of where this track is. That's a 29.59. Should be plenty good to be inside the top 24. About five tenths off of what his quick time was yesterday. But as DJ already talked about, cooler temperatures at the end of the day yesterday had some of these times a little bit lower, some of these speeds a little bit higher than we might see today. Here's one of the chasers, Ryan Sieg from Tucker, Georgia. And even though he's got a red paint scheme, you'll notice all of the Xfinity chasers will have that red band across the top of the windshield with the Xfinity logo. They'll have a red painted spoiler. And then the lower front fascia and splitter will also be red. And that's how you'll be able to identify all 12 of them in the field tonight. Yeah, Ryan Sieg a little bit loose on the exit on this second lap. See if it's any quicker. No, it actually slowed down. That could have cost him out of turn four. So that's two laps. Uh, he is second quickest right now. And then that race as to who's going to be a part of the race or who's going to miss it. Timmy Hill's the one, the car that uh, is in most danger. He would be the first one out if he's not inside the top uh, 
33. And right now he's sitting in the 35th spot, so he'll have to try to make another attempt here. Here's Ryan Seed back out. He's in right now, but a little insurance being bought right here by his team. Well, probably working on the car, maybe realizing that the tires, it's not going to affect them as much, and just work on it and see if they can make the car a little bit better for the second round. Also, to see if they could get a little further up in the, the running order, and they did that. Just over a minute remaining. DJ talked about it earlier. Better be leaving pit road with about 45 seconds. And you can see steam pouring out of the 51 now, giving it, giving it all he's got. And he's just going to miss. Ryan Sieg right on the line there. Nice dive into turn three. Can he hold it coming off the corner? Going to lose a little time right there. Yeah, he was loose in that last session. Let's we'll see if they were able to get this car driving a little better to, to get a little more speed. That's just going to be 17th for Ryan Sieg right now. Talked to the team about yesterday's action, and the car was a little bit, uh, a little bit too tight, actually, in practice yesterday to do what Ryan wanted to do with the race car. So it sounds like they've been on both sides of the balance now. See him taking yet another lap, but this one's not even as good as the last one. He's not going to be fast enough. But drops back. Down into three. He's behind the 39 of Sieg. Yeah, it's in that speedy car right there. You can see it still, and just Jones the opportunity that he was looking for. We mentioned Ryan Sieg in the 39. Resume the race in the 10th position. This is what happened to him a couple of laps ago, and he is back to 18th. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Up and out of the group. We've talked about how you, know, you can be aggressive and you can go after this pretty hard, but you get outside of that groove, and there's just no grip whatsoever. Saw it off of turn four. 39 of Ryan Sieg is around. And that right front looks down. Don't know if it was a result of the spin or if that's what sent it around. Yeah, right. Yeah, you see the right rear tire there flapping, so that's a tire has actually come apart, it looks like. I don't know if he's run over something, cut it, or if it was you know, from, probably from the damage there is what cut that right rear tire. Uh, he's also going to get a penalty because he was outside the cone. Probably the least of their problems right now uh, as he entered pit road. Got to be inside that orange cone down there before you can access pit road. You can see the damage to the right side there from the hit to the wall. Likely the cause of, uh, of that, DJ. Yeah, just pushed it in. You can see exactly where it, it cut that tire. You see, he was actually trying to get to pit road. He was down on the apron trying to make it, and the car got away from him. He spun right here. That would get it right. It, NASCAR's thrown the caution at this time. See the lights come on. And then he was on the outside of the cone as he entered pit road. Oh, and way out of the groove, the 39 of C. He collects it. Teammate Matt Tift with a very fast 18 car, and Ryan Sieg in the 39. Yep. And Tift trying to stay on that lead lap. He had that penalty for the restart violation that, that he incurred. Had to make that safe for everyone. Looks like maybe Ryan Sieg will get the, the free pass and get back on the, the lead lap also. Uh, that's what I was just curious about. And there he is in the position. First car not scored on the lead lap will be awarded a lap to go around, a free pass, if you will. And as uh, someone once coined, I believe it was our friend Wally Dallenbach, that guy's a lucky dog. 